Welcome back, everybody. It's time to take a look at Dragon Age Inquisition. Mike here is going to tell us all about it. Mike, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me. Uh, let's jump right into it. This, sure. Uh, this is a highly anticipated RPG. Yeah. Yeah, we've been, uh, I mean, we've worked on it for about three years now. Yeah. Um, and what we're showing today is kind of a, a condensed version of what we've been showing to people at, when they come to this uh, booth. Sure. Take a look behind closed doors. Uh, one part absolutely in love with it is that we're showcasing kind of the race and the gender choices. Uh, what you see there is a Canari, first time we've had them playable in the game, uh, Inquisitor, and she's uh, it's female. So we've got the mage class and so on. We've got a ton of different combinations we're showing off to different people at the show. This looks gorgeous. Yeah, that was kind right. of the goal. <laughs> uh, we um, we you know we, we got hold of Frostbite three and, and yeah. they kind of you know the folks at Dice were like, so what would you do with this? And we we're like, well, let's see, a place big enough to have jets and tanks and right. uh, I don't know. I bet we could probably make some epic fantasy in there. So um, you know, lots of dragons. But yeah, the the play space you see here and you can kind of go almost anywhere you can see is bigger than all of Dragon Age Origins put together in terms of square footage. Hmm. Can we expect sort of. Uh, combination of Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age 2? Yeah, I think that's that's a fair thing to say. I mean, the, the big new thing on top of that is the massive space. But as you can see there, uh, Origins allowed you to do kind of the tactical top-down. Sure. That's now on all platforms, not just on the PC. Uh, so all players can do it. You can also kind of zoom in and zoom out as you see fit. Run time, resume time, switch characters, all that, which is a very tactical edge. It's something that really goes to our, our goals of, of teamwork being central to DA. Um, but on top of that, then, for DA2, oh, things are a little faster, they're responsive, you're able to get right into the fray, throw spells very quickly, no 10-minute casting times or anything like that. Sure. We're seeing a lot of combat here. Is this in the middle of a quest? Yeah, we're, we're in an area, we're actually making our way to Red Cliff Village, which was uh, location in Oregon. It's totally been rebuilt since the, uh, since the devastation, but we're cutting our way through, and what's happening in this area is that the mages and Templars, one of our running themes, have totally broken away from the Chantry. They're fighting over the location, and our goal as we come through here is eventually to restore peace to the area. And it's part of how we're evolving uh, the world. We have a, a system called the World Master, kind of like a Game Master, except bigger. Okay. And what it does is uh, dynamically repopulate spaces based on what you've been doing. So if the Mages and Templar fight is still happening, then you will see lots of their combats and for you to fight through them. Also, we have a horse. I like the horse. We do have a horse. horse. Yeah, I mean, big spaces like this pretty much demanded it, but we went beyond horse. We've got, uh, you know, giant lizards you can ride and, and you can collect kind of a whole selection of them and choose which one you prefer. This is a much more open game it than is. the previous Dragon Age, is that it correct? Is. Um, that said, we, what we've done is tried to integrate this open space with the story to make it kind of a part and parcel of the same thing. So um, fundamentally as Inquisitor, you're, you're kind of leading from the front, you're like a Joan of Arc figure, depending, you know, you're, you're an inspiration. And so your goal is to build the Inquisition's power by, by doing things that, that earn re uh, renown, or you actually establish new camps and spread your influence. And as you do that, you spend that power on where the story goes next. You mentioned the story. What can you tell us about the story? Well, it really begins with a, a, a massive cataclysm. Uh, the sky opens up. Demons come pouring out of this thing called the Breach. And as that happens, uh, it kills like thousands of people. And the big problem it leaves is that uh, the Chantry, which has kind of been the thing keeping the lid on the pot of Thetis. Dragon. Yeah, there's a huge dragon. Uh, completely gets wiped out, like the, the, the leadership's gone. As a result, uh, the Inquisition steps up to fill that void to try and set things right. Are we going to fight this dragon here? We're going to fight this dragon. We like absolutely are. We built the dragons uh, with an all new system. They are now have individual limb targeting. Uh, they react differently if their limbs become wounded or damaged. Uh, they attack in different arcs, they can fly around the areas. Before they used to be pretty static, but here you'll notice she's got someone behind her and it doesn't like that. We saw some of this footage yesterday during the conference. Right? Yes, absolutely. Right. Yeah, the dragon dragon has a ton of different attacks, and ultimately we want you to have to prepare for them. They're basically the, the top tier combats in the game. Uh, and with them, you want to be bringing you know, your dragon slaying swords and your right element weapons and, and so on, because that'll give you a huge edge. When we walked into this area, I think it said discovered blood cliffs. Yep. So there are different areas that you... Absolutely. Once, once you discover them... Yeah, so we're, we're in a single region right now. All these jumps here have basically been within the, what we call the hinterlands. There are also regions that are a massive desert. You get a fro you know, frozen mountaintops. So the game takes you across two different nations, Threlden and Orlais. You get to visit all kinds of cool locales. Ah, 
Yeah, and I here we're seeing this is uh, this is the haste spell. Gives you a huge advantage because the dragon moves slow, you guys move fast. But it uses a new resource called Focus, which is built via teamwork. So it's kind of a shared resource. Uh, gives you a huge edge, lets you do things like wound the dragon's leg. So now it's down, one leg's under it. It can't get up, it can't fight you this nearly as effectively. I but can't. you can't use those spells just willy-nilly because when they went, once they've used up, you can't cast them again. So you have to be pretty tactical and strategic about when you use them. I was kind of feeling bad for the dragon there for a second. For just a minute, I mean, the, the, the big thing we want to do is make them actually, you know, yes, they're predators, but they are, they are creatures, right? And they have their own pathos and that kind of stuff. Uh, that said, it will eat your face, sure. kind of sure, sure. without hesitation, so don't feel too bad. All right, where are we here? This takes us inside. Uh, we basically jump to a part in the story um, where we've come to put an end to the mage attacks. Uh, we're inside Redcliffe Castle. The mages have taken it over. You can see the breach has grown. We're a little bit later in the game here. And, of course, demons are pouring through, and we can talk about a uh, how the, the character, your character has basically been marked. You've got some sort of weird magic. That's one of the mysteries in the game that you need to inquisit, if you will. Uh, oh, yeah. And so you can affect these things called rips. Demons are pouring out of them. They basically represent a fundamental instability in the world. If you can kill the demons guarding them, you can close them. And this is partly why you become inquisitive, because you can do something no one else can do. And everyone has to at least respect that. We're getting a, a look at how varied the environments are. I think. Yeah. As we jump from area to area, they all look totally different from yeah. each other. And this is really the tip of the iceberg. In this part, we're in a little bit more story heavy. It's almost like a mix of an indoor-outdoor dungeon. But again, uh, you, you're going to be going all over the place and seeing all kinds of cool um, locales, each with their own kind of challenges and themes. Coming up, we're going to talk a little bit um, about tactical combat. So, well, so far we've shown a little bit of it, um, but you'll see it in the fight coming up. Uh, we got a nice mix of story and kind of combat going on here, because really, you know, some people are worried, oh, did you just make an only open world game? But really, big story yeah. moments, big hooks, stuff to get your emotions going. And here we have uh, the female Inquisitor, and she's alongside Dorian, who's a oh, follower we've brought with us. He's from the Tevinter Imperium. He's a member of the Magisterium, and, and he kind of hates what his, his country's starting to do. They're all turning into the bad guys. He wants to put a stop to that, so he joins the Inquisition. Also, bitch and mustache. I like that, yeah. Yeah, and so as we come here, one of the things is that who you bring with you can affect how the story plays out, because Dorian, uh, this is Alexius. He, he studied under Alexius, so they have kind of that history, and so you'll see different stuff happen in the dialogues and story based on who you have. So here we get into the tactical yeah. stuff. When you're playing, you can use it to just get information and kind of zoom around, but what we're doing here is issuing orders. You control the whole party, uh, you can get your statistical upgrades, and then you can either return to real time and they'll carry those orders out, or if you want to play that way all the time, you can enter what we call engage mode. And that lets you just advance time, stop it again, issue new orders. You can play it very, very tactically, almost like a board game or, or like you know your classic XCOM. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to give players really the option to play their way, however you think is cool. I think this one's in the bag. An axe to the face will do that. What's happening here in the scene? Bring the, bring the demo to a close on yeah, a bit of a cliffhanger. We have your, your uh, followers saying, oh, geez, we don't have a lot of time. We have a spell we have to cast tied yeah. to the amulet. Don't want to spoil too much about it. Sure. The nice thing about a big game is you don't have to spoil too much of the story yeah, when you demo so it. And I've you already seen. A lot and you've only shown a little. Oh yeah, I've seen a ton of people already, kind of like, okay, wait, what does this mean? Yeah. Uh, trying to figure out what's really going on. But the short version: bad guys are coming. Last stand. Liliana's making her uh, buying you some time at whatever cost. Turns out everybody's buying you some time at whatever cost. I like this uh, walking stick guy. He looks awesome. Yeah, that's uh, that's called a uh, basically a terror. They're uh, kind of a lesser demon, but kind of top tier. Um, all of our demons are based on kind of, you know, human emotion, so he'd almost be like subservient to a fear demon, that kind of thing. I see. Is that the end of the demo? That's there? it. Smash cut to black. Very nice. Very nice. Dragon More Age. on October 7th. Right? October 7th. Yeah. Dragon Age Inquisition is out yeah. October 7th. Mike, thanks so much for bringing the game by today. Yeah, no problem. Really appreciate gorgeous. it. gorgeous. Thank you Can't so much. Can't wait to play more. Stay tuned. We have lots more big games coming straight at you from E3 2014.